I made a specific note in your lesson plans that you should not make a vocabulary card for the word SI units. And the reason for that is because the author's definition is not correct. Um, SI units are actually a list of seven units um, that are based on some kind of a standard from which all of our other units are derived. Um, for example, uh, the speed of light in a vacuum is how we determine how long a meter is. And so meter is one of the SI units. Um, kilogram is a unit of mass. Second is a unit of time. Um, Kelvin, which you probably have never heard of, is a unit of temperature. You're probably familiar with Celsius and Fahrenheit, but there is another temperature scale called Kelvin, and that is um, the SI unit for temperature is Kelvin. Um, we talk about amperes or amps as a unit of, um, of current. We talk about candelas as a, uh, a unit of illumination when we're talking about light. And we talk about moles, um, not the little furry creature that lives in the ground, but we talk about moles as a unit of how to measure how many molecules are in something. So those seven units that I just listed are SI units. What the author of your book was really talking about is the metric system. Um, the metric system um, uses units of prefixes and um, these basic units and we derive everything from the SI units, but the SI units are not the way that she defines them. Millimeter, centimeter, decimeter, kilometer, all of those are derived units from one SI unit. And so what basically the, what you need to understand is that when we're making measurements in science, we do not use SI units, we use the metric system when we're making measurements, okay? So if you understand that piece of it, that when we make measurements, we use the metric system, then you have the piece of information that you need to know. All right, the rest of this video, I'm gonna be discussing experiment 1.1, um, which is an introduction to the microscope. Um, it will probably be helpful if you have your textbook open to this experiment. It starts on page 28. Uh, so if you don't have your book, run, get it real quick. Uh, you can put me on pause until you get back. Um, the first part of this in procedure A, um, it tells you to learn the parts of the microscope. And in order to help you learn the parts of the microscope, I have given you a coloring sheet in order to do that. And if you utilize that coloring sheet as you're learning the different terminology for the different parts of the microscope, I think it will be very helpful. Um, as you're coloring each part, you want to um, also read the description in your textbook to see what that particular piece does. So that is going to substitute for part A um, in the procedure. Then, um, basically, you're going to follow the instructions in your lesson plans uh, for exactly how to color that coloring sheet. I've also sent a video uh, with instructions on how to use a microscope. It's a very well put together video by a college professor. And there are a couple things I want to point out because more than likely your um, microscopes probably aren't quite as nice as the one that he's showing you. So there'd be a, a couple, three different differences um, from what he says versus what you are going to do. Um, first of all, he mentions that you're going to have to clean the lenses every time. You probably will not have to do that as long as you don't stick your thumb on the lens and put a fingerprint all over it. Um, so as long as you keep your fingers off of the lenses, they likely will not have to be cleaned every time. If you need to clean them, just make sure you use a piece of lens paper. Um, also, you are likely going to have clips on your microscope, just um, like these clips are right here, these will lift up just a little bit so that you can put the slide under them so that it doesn't scoot. He has these um, these fancy smancy little holder type thingies where he actually turns knobs and you can move the slide that way. Uh, you're gonna have to move it with your fingers uh, almost for sure. So I just didn't, I didn't want that to confuse you. And then finally, um, you're going to be using slides and cover slips. The cover slips are little itty bitty squares of glass. And he tells you that when you're done with them, you can throw them away. Um, do, please don't do that. Um, maybe at the college level, you can throw cover slips away. 
where we are, we are not throwing away cover slips. You can reuse them. You just need to be very, very careful when you wash them uh, so that you don't snap them in half. Um, so wash them very carefully. When I dry a cover slip, I usually just um, lay it on a paper towel on the counter and then I can um, take another paper towel and just kind of blot it dry. Um, the cover slips can eventually get scratched, but they most certainly can be reused. So I just didn't want you to think that you should throw your cover slips away after one use because you should not. Okay, um, a lot of what could potentially make this lab confusing is the fact that they are telling you to use the student notebook, which I do not have you getting. So at the end of part A, there is a table that I want you to put in your notebook and it's going to tell you what kind of magnification that you're looking at at each with each different objective that you use. Now the ocular of the microscope is this piece right here and the ocular by itself will provide a 10 time magnification. These pieces down here are called the objectives and so the shortest one um, will magnify four times the next one will magnify and the, these this will turn as you'll get to see in this other video um, the middle one will magnify 10 times and the high uh, power will magnify 40 times so to find out what magnification you're using at each one of these you're just going to take these numbers and you're going to multiply them together so if you're using the low power objective four times ten is a 40 times magnification um, the middle power objective is 10 times 10, which is going to be 100 times magnification. And the high power times the 10 times of the ocular is going to give you a 400 times magnification. So I want this table in your lab notebook. So make sure that you get that put in there in the appropriate place. Um, you are going to be looking at three different slides in this experiment. You're going to use um, the letter E that you cut out of a magazine. Um, you're going to use um, some colored threads, and then you're also going to use a prepared slide. I have given you very specific instructions in your lesson plans for what you need to change and what you need to do. But just in order to summarize it, um, every time in your book where they have something printed in blue, that is an instruction for something that is specifically in the student notebook, which I did not have you buy because quite frankly, um, I don't think it's worth the money that, you're, that you would spend for it. And I think it's much better for you to learn how to keep a lab notebook. So anytime that something is printed in blue, basically you're going to ignore those instructions and you're gonna use the instructions that I gave you instead. Um, one thing that they do tell you to do in the book is that uh, for example, when you look at the letter E, you're going to be looking at it under all three powers and they tell you to draw every one of them. You do not need for me to draw every single power. What I want you to do is look at all three powers, pick the view that you thought gave you um, the best image and then draw the one that you like the best. And then once you've drawn that, that one image, then um, you will be able to make sure that you write the magnification down and show me what you saw there. There is a sample lab write-up in the document that I sent called Writing Up Experiments, so make sure that you look at that. You will have three drawings for this experiment as opposed to the nine that they tell you to make in the book. Um, there are three safety um, rules that I want to emphasize to you as you're using a microscope so that we don't end up damaging anything. Okay, so first of all, you always want to start at low power and focus there first. Uh, yeah, eventually we want to get to high power, but because um, the higher power you go to, your field of what you're able to see shrinks every single time, you have to start at low power and get it focused there and then go to increasingly higher power. So always start at low power and focus there first. Secondly, um, there are two focusing knobs um, and I can show you on my microscope, they may look a little different on yours. Um, the coarse focus knob, um, you can actually see the stage move up and down. And if I hold this still enough, you can probably see my stage moving up and down as I turn this, because it turns this stage a lot. Um, the fine focus knob, if I turn it, you really can't see the stage moving because it moves it such a minuscule amount. Um, when you're using the coarse focus, you only want to do that on low power. Don't ever turn that coarse focus knob when you get up to higher powers. Otherwise, what ends up happening is you hear this sickening crunch 
and you realize that you've lowered the objective into the slide, you've crunched the slide, and you might have crunched the, the objective as well, the lens, uh, which is not cool. That's a lot of damage. So only use the coarse focus knob um, on low power. Don't use it on higher powers. And finally, as you're turning um, this nose piece to get um, your, your microscope into high power, you can see just how close this lens or the objective lens is to the stage. And if there's a slide on here, it's just that much closer. So every time you're going to put the objective on high power, make sure that you actually are looking at the microscope from the side and you make sure that you don't hit the slide um, as you're putting, the, putting it into place. It shouldn't if you've been focusing it right, but it's always good to make sure that you check to make sure that, again, you don't um, take the objective and then crash into the slide with it. Okay, so um, again, I'll step out of the way in case you need to pause the video and make sure that you have these three rules written down. And then I hope you enjoy your first microscope lab.